Hello and welcome to the Simulation Soccer League. I'm Jiggly. And I'm TVC. And we got another week of Division One football here for you. Uh, how about you take it away for now? What, what what What's the setup this week? So we are looking at match day 11 here. We wind a little bit closer to the end of the season now. Uh, we have, I believe it's 14 total games. So this is the final third coming up here. Uh, to start us off, we will have Athena playing Acra, Athena had uh, and still kind of do find themselves in that title race. Uh, they finished last match day uh, in fourth place, though, after a loss, a rather heavy handed loss at that, and uh, are only three points off the league leaders, Hollywood, uh, who are set top side with 20 points. Acra, on the other hand, fight for their lives here. Uh, they are in the relegation spot they're seventh place right now with 10 points on uh tokyo also tied with them are 10 points here but uh, tokyo has a four goal goal difference uh, so akron will probably look to make that up here if they can uh, it's gonna be a good match to start us off okay well we're not seeing the match just yet <laughs> no uh we are just kind of hanging out for a little bit I thought we were going to go into in-depth uh, for the entire week and where everything's sitting. <laughs> uh, if we have the time, but I think we should be getting to the game soon. I hope we're getting to the game soon. Well, I, I think I hear the crowd now. I think I hear them. Aren't we supposed to be in the stadium? Like canonically, are we in the stadium or, <laughs> or do we like are are we a studio thing? Um, I I'm I'm not sure. Uh, there it is. Here's something. And here's the lineups. It's uh empty bucket four four two for uh from a thin eye. And Oh, that's a strikerless formation coming out from Acra. Um, I need I need my drink now. <laughs> uh, it's always fun when we see a strikerless formation come out. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not, uh, well. If it plays well against Athena, Athena is so good at Ooh. ball on defense. Rigmarole getting right back at uh, Labovich for taking the ball away. And a lot of time has passed already. As we got a thin eye working their way around. I thought they were going to head to that left wing, but apparently not. Here they are up the right wing, though. Labovich sends it in. Lavert goes wide. Quarter kick is not going to do much. Here comes Acker moving their way up the pitch. I guess not. We are seeing a thin eye being a whole lot more in the opposing zone, but here is a quick breakaway counterattack. Selich! And it goes over the bar. That looked like a fine fingertip shape by Anderson, but it just barely missed. And, uh,. Good chance there for Acro. Maybe we see another here. Well, wow. there it is. A Did lightning bolt. Uh, I didn't even get the ball. So drop the press here. Two times. He's just sitting on the on the shoulder of the last defender. Like a striker would. Two touch, left foot 
shot, and uh, away it goes. Now, you're correct. He is playing in a Shadow Striker sort of role, um, but he was playing very, very high up there. Well, there's Levert, and they get that one back real quick. And immediate response here for Athena, and it's They're going to be call called back offside. offside. I want to see this one again. I'm not sure. Well, oh. oh. Okay, oh, yeah, definitely. Wow, wow. You know what? I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> we had a bad camera angle. I don't think there's any way we could have seen that without the replay. Well, here comes another attack. Ansa oh. gets past Anderson. That is a horrible move. Yannick Anderson makes an awful mistake. The Danish keeper comes out to play the ball as he normally does, but uh, this time Kofi Anderson just there to strip it off of him. That does that? Yeah. Not having a that defense is not having a good time at the moment, especially that goalkeeper. Because yeah, that's you know you never want to see that. <laughs> Has a wide open net behind him. I mean, honestly, you put that XG at 0.99 for that specific shot. He's got pretty much nowhere else to go with that. Yeah, no. Um, on the replay there, it seems to be that Anthea just out-dribbled Anders Anderson there. So, uh, I don't know. That looked like down. it bounced off of Anderson. It just bounced off of him. You got to be a Emil Heskey to not finish that one. Here comes a corner, and that's not going to re really do much. And yeah, I said before that, you know, Athenai is staying much more in Accra's end, but Accra's leading. And I think it comes down to, you know, they. I think the big thing about that strikerless formation and the reason why it's kind of working for Accra here is that it creates that a little extra space for the run-up uh, on that press. And it... You know, Athenai is going to play out the back. They are a very structured team. But uh, Acra is looking to, you know, get them right in that half space. Yeah, and no, uh, it's it's really difficult to defend that, uh, especially with the sort of aggressive midfield Athenai has. I'm going to say that it's... Uh, Here's the downside. I don't really see much of a chance uh, with Accra in possession. I see they were only really able to do that when they were finally able to pull a thin eye back. Uh, it they can't really you know set up in the opposing end. They have to rush in. Yeah, they're they're better on the counter than they are in possession play. You're correct, uh, but. You see that uh, before we flash away here for halftime, they've got about 52% possession of this game. Which is kind of weird. <laughs> uh, 44 should have floored that one. And yeah, halftime... And then I definitely feels like they should have something at this point. But yeah, that Acker's just gotten in off of two very bad mistakes. And yeah. you make those count. So I think the first was a wonder goal from uh, Shellac. You don't see those happen every day. And but it came off of a giveaway. It That's did the come thing off about of it. Giveaway. You're correct. Uh, and the second off of the. Move by answer, mistake by Anderson. You can attribute it to both. But uh, they do have the two goal lead, and that's all you need, really. We'll see if Athena I can answer here. Their formation is a little more aggressively suited, so uh, with those four attackers up top, they certainly have a good chance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's the old saying of they don't ask how, they ask how many. So they've got two goals, and I think that uh, Athenai needs to step up right now if they want to get something out of this game. 
and we certainly know they are capable of it. But uh, after last game, I have to wonder if their player's confidence is a little bit uh, hurt. They did absolutely get um, demolished by, uh, I want to say it was Tokyo. And looks like we are ready from Accra. And... Huh. No subs from either side. I wonder why the sub screen took so long. Well, here's a quick counterattack from 44. Oh, and he goes down. Apologies. It was... CF Catalonia that did the uh, demolition job against the and I last week. That is a massive yikes there for Athenai, who, you know, one of 44's best uh, traits is his ability to run, and that looks like a leg injury. Although I think I think both of us have experience with seeing a uh, player go down in the most crucial position with the ball in front of the net. Happened just yeah. this week. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, earlier, current uh, oh, 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 no! Oh, no! That was almost disastrous by Anderson. And second mistake, the ball finds its way through him again. So I'm going to say this, that, you know, I... I when when uh, Whenever I've talked about, you know, real-life players as well... Uh, I, I always say, like, I try not to go after a guy. Uh, you know, I may be very harsh in general, but I do understand and, you know, respect the person behind it. But there comes a point when you see two massive mistakes like that, you pull the guy after that. I remember when I was a kid playing goalkeeper for my for my dad's team, like, Indoor soccer, I was goalkeeper. My dad was the coach. I let the ball in between my legs. I never saw the pitch for the entire rest of the day. Well, they can't do that. I don't think... Uh, it's not allowed, but... Have, uh, well, I mean, it's, they could make the goalkeeper sub. I don't think they have a goalkeeper. Labovitz. Labovitz. And they've got one back, finally. It's the 60th minute now, and they are still on the back foot. But that is a goal for a thin eye. Uh, Very quick of sequence. Not having a goalkeeper there doesn't look like uh, Acra would have needed one. That was a beautifully placed shot by Labovic. I don't think anyone could have stopped that. He beat Ansa real bad there. Ansa committed a bit too far up to up front. He's so looking for another goal. He's Kofi Ansa. He got burned there. Unfortunate for Acra, but here they come again. You know, and, and, and that's the feeling that you get whenever you see, uh, you know, when, when you see a goalkeeper make those sort of mistakes so often with a game within a game, I mean, he's standing right on the line. You're almost expecting him to accidentally walk in with the ball at that point. It's been a comedy of errors for uh, Yannick Anderson. A rare poor game from him, but uh, I don't think he would make that mistake. <laughs> Certainly I mean, or, 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 or you know, thinking the ball would bounce off of him. A bad bounce, that seems more likely. Ansa skins another man. Ansa pushes forward. Tries to cross it into somebody. Isn't going to find too much space here. Ooh. Druid, well offside there. I mean, it's, it, it may be mean, but that is the story of the day right now with two poor, like, one of those mistakes did not lead to a goal. That was a good thing. But you see two horrible mistakes, and you got to hope that the defense is going to make sure that he doesn't have to make those mistakes. That's, that's the biggest thing that you look for when it comes down to luck is you just got to be so good that luck doesn't matter. And well, Lavovich's would... header is saved by Lorac. I'll tell you what they're looking for now, though. They're looking for the tying goal. So, all focus is on finding the gap in Akra's defense here. And Levert almost gets over Shaka. That's not going to work out. 
unsurprisingly, after his midfield has really kind of compressed on Athenae, uh, really able to put that pressure on. But Athenae have been able to sustain it well for now. We'll see if they can hold on. Kemoyatu is going to probably be looking for Druid here. Shot! Anderson gets to it in the corner. There you go. Uh, you called it. Komiatu in the on the crash, receiving the ball. And uh, sorry, that was not Komiatu. That was uh, Komiatu who made the pass, right? Yes. Apologies. Oh, yeah, that's kind of how this uh, formation. Forty-four works. is in. And that's saved, and that's also offside. Yeah, I was caught off guard because it didn't look like he was on side. But yeah, everything is possible when 44 has the ball. <laughs> we are in the 92nd minute now. This is the last attack, and it looks like that might be it. Good clearance by Snooks there. And it is. Acra wins this one 2 1. And uh, yeah, there's a lot that Athen I is going to be very disappointed about here. And I'm very surprised at how how little XG that that second goal was because man that <laughs> I think that it was actually a pretty good game all around. Uh, Acra are going to be happy to pick up these three points here. These are three big points in that relegation battle that I had mentioned before. Uh, so they are going to be happy to. Uh, get the edge on Tokyo here. That means Tokyo does need to find a win. On the other hand, um, Athena and I continue to slump just a little bit. They are hitting the end of the season form that uh, they showed in a couple of seasons prior. Uh, they are going to hope that Hollywood hits a patch of rough form themselves because that lead to the I, top could I get I just awfully. want to mention this while we're still here. Uh, if, if you notice... There's one thing that Akra should be worrying about. You look at the at the top there, those wings did not have a good day. And if you remember, the reason why uh, I got that goal, I think Ansa's numbers are a bit pumped up because of what he did on the attack. That that goal was because Ansa was pushing too far forward. And so I think that there is there could be a slight worry for Akra that, you know, they're not really defending well. Uh, they weren't I think really... there is a genuine worry. Acra are still in that relegation race. Uh, exactly. They did have that minus eight goal difference headed into today. So I, I think you're absolutely right. It is a genuine concern. But they and played you look well at, today. And I mean, the formation itself, I mean, you, I don't know the specific tactics that they're using. But you, you got to say that, like, it does not seem very structurally sound uh, if you... If you want to use all of those attacking players in more defensive like positions, but not in defensive roles, then suddenly you're messing with things. Uh, you're messing with the natural order of things, and uh, space will punish you. I think that's part of what contributed to their win, though. How funky yeah, there's it definitely was. like the the, the flathead uh, attack against that defense. But as I said, it only really works. On a counter, that's that's the only way it's going to work. Is you know everybody flat against it, and maybe that's how Athena are beat because we've seen Athena play some really really good defense this year, and this is the first time where we've really seen them kind of be curved open at any point in time. I, I mean, you could just you could probably credit that to a real bad day at the office for Anderson, though. I mean, that yeah. should have that game should have ended probably one one. Yeah, uh, they actually had that game on even, and I agree. Uh, but uh, again, Akra, happy to get the three points, I'm sure. What's up next? All righty, so up next, we have Hollywood versus Catalonia. So after a big win last week over at the NI, Catalonia going to be uh, sitting on the upwards motion hollywood are on top though they currently lead our league and uh they'll be hoping to put catalonia a, at a little bit of arms distance catalonia on 17th right now 
So a win would tie them for, for that league lead. Uh, however, a win with Hollywood here would mean it's a six-point gap from Catalonia, and that title becomes awfully harder to uh, to see at the end of the tunnel. Well, the uh, formations are a a bit of a weird four-two-four from uh, Hollywood and a classic four-two-three-one from Catalonia. The thing about that uh, that four-two-four is, you know, first of all, in general, four-two-four is actually like incredibly cracked <laughs> when when you have the attackers forwards it, as as i like to make the joke about like the 505 formation of uh you know let god handled midfield uh but it, if you look at the way that they are using it they are using it almost like a uh one of those 4123 formations uh, where you have that holding midfielder. And I think that that's going to be the key for them where they want to have one guy who is going to be a bit more free, might push a bit more into the attack, but you need that holding midfielder to, you know, strengthen up that defense. This is one weird formation that I'm not against. <laughs> Although the specific positioning uh, might use some work. Yeah, no, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, it is more of a four-one-three-two than it is a four-two-three. Four, sorry, four-two-four. Rashford is the more attacking midfield here. He, we've seen him play as a shadow striker in the past, so it's likely we'll see him bombarding up the midfield. Rising lays it off for Yarvidin. That bounced around in the box for a second, but did not find its way in. The man in the holding midfield position today is Alfredo Putinesca. He's been a regular for them back there, uh, rotating with Alessio Calvatore. Okamoto's cut in. That shot is saved by Scott Sterling. Scott Sterling extending the gloves to get his finger to that redirector around the net and will catch that shot off the corner. They came awfully close to his face. Not yet. That ha that that back pass is real dangerous there. Lin Kwai was lurking. Rising with the shot goes well over the bar. I mean, that's the struggle that you have with uh, with playing out of the back and pressing. You know, we have those two things are incredibly popular nowadays, and it feels like neither like only one of them should be <laughs> in order for one of them to work. Yeah, no, uh, part of that is attributed to our players un almost unnatural uh, fitness and physique. What that means is uh, most tactics... Taka's first through, and that's a goal! Flight stays down, so that's going to stick for Tiki Taka. That was nowhere near offside. <laughs> you look at this build-up here. It purses off to Lane Kwai. Taka is all the way in that mix, and Lane Kwai just puts it in behind the defense for anybody to run onto. And Fist doesn't Fist doesn't really pay attention, and there's Taka. Yeah, it gets past Lee Fist there, unfortunate for Catalonia. And uh, that was a really well-placed pass by Leon Kai, playing the weighted ball into uh, Taka's feet. There's Taka again. Sends it back to Jones, and that's going to go over the bar. Sorry, he played into space for Taka. I apologize. Here's Yarvanen. That's not going to do much. Costanza with the header. Bobby breaks through. Is he going to do something with his feet? Nope, it goes wide. That was a really good look for Ricky Bobby. A really good luck. I've not quite seen an open cage like that in a long time. 
Lengthwise sends it to Jones. You see that there's there's a bit of an issue right now. They're playing incredibly narrow once they get to the box, and that, that might be a problem. We saw that it helped a bit. You know, Taka made it out of that scrum, but that, that, that's not going to be real helpful at the end of the day if uh, if we see a, 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 a equalizer from Catalonia. I'm not sure how many how many times they're going to be able to get through in that central area. Ooh, yeah, I agree. Um, we're seeing Hollywood really crowd that box. For the most part, Catalonia seem to be happy to allow them to do so. Well, here's Hollywood now. Quick counterattack. Still have it. Bobby's free. And the shot goes wide. Oh, Ricky, Bobby. Well, if you're not first, you're last. And, well, still last of that ball there. Hunter Jones with a quick turnaround and strike. Real dangerous play in the back end. Ah, Jones couldn't keep that one. Jones will mercifully play it out for Catalonia. A real, real uh, sigh of relief comes across the defense. I'm sure they were under some real pressure from Hollywood. Here comes Van Kai again. Jones' header goes well over the bar. That's going to make it to halftime. As, as as I think we've both stated, not sure how much longer Hollywood has with this uh, with this lead in terms of you know if Catalina can get anything going forward. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to actually like find ways to get to goal. But at the same time, Catalina hasn't been doing much going forward. Um. Yeah, they found it difficult to uh, find anything really for uh, for themselves on offense. I think it's because they've been dealing with Hollywood on the offense and uh, having to defend more often than not. Uh, where they have found some success is uh, whenever they have found the ability to sustain possession, but against Hollywood's high press, that's been difficult. Hollywood has been very good at getting themselves into the box. However, it's not in the box where we've seen them be really good. Uh, it's on the transition that we've seen Hollywood being able to catch Catalonia off guard. Yeah, definitely. That that's that's where we're seeing most of their like real chances. And as I said before, that that log jam right at the top of the box that they seem to be forming whenever they get into possession. I'm not sure about that. Quick takeaway by possible almost gives it away himself and ends up doing so. Yeah, it just holds the ball a little too long there. Now, we did have a couple of changes coming in for Catalonia. That is uh, Mojo Rising coming out of the game. In comes Jackson Clark. Uh, that is going to be on the left hand side, uh, left winger. So, Floppy McFlop base out and awesome Nick Possum is in. That's the attacking midfielder. So two changes in the attacking midfield here for uh, Catalonia. We'll see if they can uh, find a difference. <laughs> Yarvin and spins and then gives it away immediately. Classic. You know, that's just what we're saying. That that clearance just bounced off of Rashford, and honestly, that's even funnier. Lake walks around the guy. Rashford cuts in with a shot, and that's saved by Gunderson. Gunderson had a real good look at it. So did Rashford, though, to be fair. I think he had more time than he thought, and he kind of rushed that shot. Anderson there to make the shade. Sorry, not Anderson. Uh, Alexandra Gunderson. Uh-oh, Okamoto looks like he's dealing with a bit of a knock. Which, as we know, you can't take the, take the man off at the moment, so 
We're just going to see how this goes. Woo! I wonder if the knock was to his head because that was a very poor decision. <laughs> Time's ticking away. Catalina needs to do something here. And, uh, wow. Oh, no. There's a very quick turnaround here. Bobby is in on goal. Finally gets it in. Decides not to risk it too much further than the uh, four feet it required to chip the keeper there. <laughs> Gets that one right this time, and that's the insurance goal for Hollywood. Probably the dagger. Honestly, we almost missed that. You know, Bobby is not good with his feet. He's really good with his head, and he's really good at finding the net one way or another. And I think that's the key thing, the, the key thing with this. You know, it, it's one of those days where Hollywood has won this game 2-0. It's one of those games where you have won this game, but maybe it's more that the other team just wasn't up for it more than your team being that much better. And... Definitely, those two goals, I don't think they really came from the the strategy. They came from other things. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Hollywood do need to go back and take a look at how that offense worked because, uh, we'll, we'll be frank, yeah, it didn't really... Um, they were really good on transition, and maybe that was the intention. Uh, they played really well. Clearly, they deserve to win 2 0 today. Uh, XG says yeah, they deserve to win. The stats say they deserve to win. Maybe Catalonia could have had one goal. Uh, but you're right, Catalonia's team as a whole didn't quite come out to play today. And it was evident from the uh, first few minutes of the match. Uh, Hollywood were just at another level, and it showed. And that's now a six point gap between themselves and Catalonia. And it looks like Hollywood is running away with the title again this year. Uh, they didn't win last year, I don't believe. That well, yeah, they be... didn't win last year, but uh, we saw what happened to what who actually won. Uh, Sydney City did win, and they are currently sitting in, I believe, it's fifth or sixth. I'll double check. Uh, well, who's playing next? Place. Uh, well, I believe it is Chapello versus Cairo, so it's not Sydney. City. I was really hoping it was Sydney so we could transition. I, but we were we were a fifty fifty and we missed it. So uh, yeah. unfortunate for us, but it's Chapello versus Cairo. So that should be another good game. Cairo City are well, they're the contenders here. They could be the ones who pull the uh, the Sydney City and snatch a title out of Hollywood's uh, noses on the last day. They are 19th uh, points uh, tied, sorry, not tied, sitting in second. Just a single point behind Hollywood before today's match day began. Uh, Hollywood obviously winning three uh, points today. Cairo will need to win to keep up. So they're going to look to bring the heat against Sao Paulo. On the other hand, Sao Paulo are the bottom eighth. Currently uh, three points away from the next team up. So it's a bit of a challenge for them. Uh, I believe Accra won. So, they're thir they won. so they have 13 points. Tokyo currently have 10. Even with a win today, Sao Paulo are still in the relegation zone. You know, that's kind of fun that, uh, you know, Cairo was in the relegation battle last season and now they're in the title race somehow. Yeah, no, um, it was. It, I think it, it came down to a number of factors, right? Sydney City falling away definitely help them there. Uh, I think Athena's acquisition of Owen 44 has now looked to help their team as a whole but hurt their win differential overall. I think Athena are a better team with Owen 44, but unfortunately they have lost a little more than they normally would have in the last I thought season. we were talking uh, about Cairo. <laughs> uh, no, Cairo City, on the other hand, uh, were the benefactors of that 
you know, Dean and I being one of the top teams who have challenged Hollywood in seasons prior, uh, with them falling up away from the uh, title contention here, and Catalonia falling a little deeper as well. It's really helped for Hollywood. Uh, sorry, Carol City, because there does have to be a team up there. And they are a good team for last couple of seasons now. They've been building a really, really good roster, and they've really settled to, into a starting 11 here. Well, we are off now. And uh, looks like the first 10 minutes are going to go by real fast here. Yep, there it is. <laughs> Yeah, it shouldn't be. Oh, we're gonna hit twenty much. minutes. We've hit twenty minutes now. <laughs> Neither team really doing much. Capello fifty five percent possession of the ball. Fashion fits already on the yellow card. Made a dangerous tackle there, but gets the ball clean. Damage. Possible, Freddy, and that's going to go wide. That was a good shot by Freddy. Adam Rage probably wasn't expecting it to come so close. Dives for the save, but doesn't have to make it. Uh, we will see, and there we go. Coffin There's Biscuit. a goal. <laughs> Off the opportunistic free kick. No, throw in, I apologize. The throw in? I thought it was a free kick. Oh, it worked like one. Hode, you know, Hode did the best they could, I think. They followed their man. It's just Biscuit got a bit free, and that's all they yeah. needed. Biscuit did win the header there. Uh, Hode was just right place, wrong time, I think. Had he been there a second sooner, he might have been able to contest the uh, the aerial. Well, here we are with the attack for Cairo. Noodle breaks through, and there the flag's down. Catch up Noodle with a burst of speed, crashing in from the wing to put that home. Cairo find their equalizer. Oh, he came from the midfield. What was he doing in the midfield? Oh! <laughs> that, you know, that that's a... Uh, that's one of those plays that you just sort of... You just sort of make. It... it, it you go in with absolutely no thought and just hope that you're on side. And he was. So you say hope, I say I say That's not awareness. That is so that is so incredibly close. That's not awareness. That is just hope. Yes. But that's I think it's more routine and instinct. I'm sure in training noodles made that run ten thousand times. And it's the repetition that you kinda drill your body into a sort of pattern. And we've seen Noodle do that a few times. Really good at breaking that offside trap. The header goes over the bar. Another log jam in front, but Ayadele! That's saved. With all the excitement, I haven't quite been able to talk about Sao Paulo's formation. Maybe at the corner here. Yeah, I didn't notice were... the formation. Is it something... That I wouldn't like. 
Um, it's a four one three. Sorry, it's it's a four two three one really, but it, they have a defensive midfielder and a central midfielder stacked up in the game. Oh line. yeah, I'm fine with that. So it's pretty well at asymmetric four two three one with that defensive midfielder. I think I, I think I explained it best when talking about that Hollywood formation, where you it, it, sometimes you want to have that more attacking player, but you still need to like make absolutely sure that you have that defensive midfielder. Exactly. They've done so here. Uh, just a little more essentially, they have Newman playing against that Shadow Striker, so we'll expect to see him a little further up the line next to Coffee Biscuit as well. Cairo playing in that oh so popular 4 1 4 1 with those two Shadow Strikers. Which, I must say, they are very good at playing this tactic. I mean, there hasn't been really much for me to any, even talk about. <laughs> Definitely and we a... start, start the second half. Ibrahimovic in for uh, Newman at the attacking midfield position. No changes in for Cairo City. There are no Kursov. That's stopped. Eritrop had a really good game a couple games ago against Catalonia. Hasn't quite had the impact here. Tries to send that up to Torres. And, you know, that's the thing, you know, I've talked about this a few times, that, like, you want to try... If, if your opponent is keeping two players back, you want to send two players forward. Here's Slumish! Ah! Cleared away by Thessenvitz early. Nearly on the line with Thessenvitz as he cleared that. Big save for uh, Capello. They hold on to the lead. i oh, sorry. They tie. Torres! And he's offside. It's a lunge there by, uh, by Franco. Sorry, not Franco, by Sao Paulo's defender there. Half nearly expected a cleat to land on Franco Torres. And now Sao Paulo moves forward. I guess not. You know, that's the danger that Cairo has. We've seen here... Multiple counterattacks so far, and here's another one. Freddy! That's stopped by Rage, but that's a real good shot there. The reason why Cairo are able to play so aggressively with so many men forward is that they are really good at employing that press. And if here takes that away. Now here's Biscuit. Only has who to beat. Gets past the Heretic, and Sao Paulo has the lead again. Big goal here for Sao Paulo, 63 minutes in. Uh, and it's a very similar-looking sort of goal off the long ball here. Whew. Just a good play to get it up to him. Almost the Heretic. We've seen that a couple times today. Uh, that ball curling over the fingertips of that keeper. Uh, just really, really well placed by Coffee Biscuit. Now again, Anavir. Mm. That's going to go wide. I'll, I'll, I, I mean, I would have put that right in front of Biscuit. Running out of space, don't have the angle. Get it to the guy running on the center. Yeah, a bit of a greedy decision there by uh, Sao Paulo's winger, but uh, yeah, but they still lead. 
We'll see how that goes. Five minutes now. And Sao Paulo is still the most aggressive side out here right now. Desimvitz in the corner, sends it in. Doesn't hit a hit a head with a red shirt on, but they do still keep possession here as Ibrahimovic. And Brimovic. Jorkish now. So it comes the other way. Now outside the top of the box. And Cairo just not taking, you know, quality shots there. Oh, it's a bit of a strange decision to shoot into three people's feet. But, uh... Lemish now? Saved by Rage. They keep it in. Noodle can't keep possession of the ball as the diver takes it away. And now it's coming back forward with another counterattack. And it's stopped by Toastman. Toastman makes the game, uh, well, not game saving, but momentum saving tackle there. And that will reset play. Here's Adele now. Gives it away. Kyle's going to try to move forward quickly now. Back the other way. Back the other way, but... Ugh, biscuit! Ah! The goalkeeper was down on the ground for some reason and could not get possession of the ball to get a shot off. Yeah, the defenders had some other biscuit, though, so no shot able to get past them. Unfortunately, he won't find a hat trick, but I think Sapala are going to find the win here. Yeah, it's 93rd minute with two minutes of injury time. And yep, that's it. Sao Paulo wins it 2-1 to one against Cairo. And, uh, you know, looking at this game, you, you, you might have expected uh, Sao Paulo to be the team that's fighting for the title race uh, rather than Cairo. Yeah, Sao Paulo looked really, really good this match. Uh, Cairo, on the other hand, uh, had their flashes. You see that they did have that uh, 1.76 XG. Uh, they definitely deserved the one goal that they had. Uh, unfortunately, just a little bit undone by Sapalo's long ball. So that is a big win for Sapalo. Uh, I don't think they pulled themselves off the bottom of the table. Uh, I think they are still actually hold on tokyo haven't played yet so we don't know what their goal difference will be at the end of the match uh but with a 2-1 sort of result sao paulo have or will have tied either tokyo or uh, if tokyo lose by a lot today then they'll be ahead on goal difference and in seventh on the other hand Kairo you're, you're just lose. mentioning goal difference in tokyo and i'm just thinking about the very weird situation in the actual j league right now <laughs> I am not quite aware what the situation is in the J League. Let's just say it's one of those few situations at the end of a season where every single game actually matters for like positions in the standing that actually matter. Like not just fighting for mid table, like everyone is either fighting for Champions League title or relegation. <laughs> well, we are very familiar with that over here, aren't we? <laughs> with a whole you know, they have a whole lot more teams. We have less teams. So that means that it happens a whole lot more often, so Every game is exciting here. It is super exciting. And the next game will be our most exciting of the day. It's Tokyo and Sydney. And I already kind of talked about what's on the stakes here for Tokyo. They are potentially bottom of the table if they don't pull a win off here. Sydney City have been a bit of a free fall since the midseason. Uh, they started off really well and since then have fallen off. They are currently uh, looking at a tumble into the relegation zone if they don't uh, find a way to right the ship here. Yeah, I think. Well, well I mean, what's uh, who who would be in the relegation zone right now exactly? If uh, with with Sao Paulo winning that game, who's ahead of them? Is that Sydney? 
No, so Sao Paulo winning that game, they are tied in goal difference with Tokyo right now. So if uh, the game okay. had tied 0-0, Sao Paulo would still be 8th, but Tokyo would be in 7th uh, with eight. Sorry, 11 points. Sydney City would have 12 points, so they would be in 6th. Akron 13th would jump up to 5th. Well, uh, you know, uh, as they... As they say in hockey, uh, let's do that soccer. <laughs> do they do they say that in hockey? <laughs> well, I mean, like like what they say in hockey. I know, I know. Some players, especially some of the European hockey players, like to look play a little futsal uh, to warm up. Uh, keepy uppies. That's what it's called. I I would thank you to use the correct term. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's it's played in. A, Ooh, it's played we got in... a five zero five out here, lads. <laughs> no, it's a four one four one. That's a five zero five. And here we have what I was talking about before the four one two three. You know, the four one two three is best used with like that tiki taka formation. I know that you know Barcelona has used it plenty of times. And uh, yeah, here here we are. Entertain us. Last game of the day here. Typically not a formation we see from Tokyo. They play in, uh, they've played in the last couple of weeks in a more uh, 4-1-4-1 sort of aggressive formation. With a, with an actual midfielder instead of a holding midfielder. Yes. I think this might be our most interesting match of the day. I would this hope it, so. But this game has see. a good vibe to it. Kaido sends it in. Ha! Real close there. The attack is still on. I think it's the Pink City jerseys that give it such a good vibe. No. Hog heads it in. Almost gets that one. No, it's 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 uh, the immediate thing of it cut away. Uh, near the beginning of the game, it cut away right as Tokyo stops a pass. I mean, it looks like this this game is gonna just bounce back and forth, and that's gonna be fun for us. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm hopeful Tokyo have been involved in um, some high scoring affairs in the past. Here comes Rise. That's gonna be stopped. We're gonna have the corner kick. I'm not even saying high scoring. I'm just saying this is gonna be a back and forth game. Oh, I'm saying I want it to be high scoring. I love a high scoring affair. I'm just here for the vibes. Isagi's... Uh, I, I can't even tell who got on the end of that cross. Doesn't matter too much as it doesn't amount to anything, but got pretty close there. And Tokyo is on the... Uh, on the attack here. Very much with the upper hand, but Sydney looking to do something, finally. About eight minutes into the match. Zayed... Oh, it does go in the net, but it is offside. Oh, that was a good-looking shot, but uh, offside by Zaid. And that header, oh, just off the inside of the bar, and that's a offside. Huh. <laughs> I would like to see a replay on that, but we're not going to get it. Line judges have been on top of it, it seems. Some pretty remarkable calls made on both sides of the pitch. And uh, Tokyo still uh, with the domination. Through 23 minutes. No goals, though. As I said, back and forth. A quick takeaway by Lopta. As Sydney tries to set up their attack now. Keeper sends it in. Rube's shot header is saved by Berger. Josh Berger, the American goalkeeper, has been stalwart in that for the uh, Tokyo this year so far. Elena Soderberg, back to Visser. Hey. Trying to get the ball into the box and can't really get into a position where anyone can shoot. And we're only 30 minutes into this match. I think we're already 30 minutes into this match. This game has kind of flown by. <laughs> I 
Hog gets that stopped. Now it's sent back forward. Here's Sydney again. A bit apprehensive to move forward. Kathleen Zayats! <laughs> I think they took one too many touches there. I'm not, the I, I don't know if he took enough touches. <laughs> the pass before Zayed had a clean look at the goal and kind of forced the ball to the striker's feet. And there's Sydney working their way back up again. Lopta. For the Rube, sends it in. And that Claflin's, is that Claflin? Claflin's header saved. Can I see it? Do I get to see it? Former Atlanta player, Nathan Claflin. Okay. I didn't even know that one. <laughs> Isagi's shot is well over the bar. Rube! Ah! Whoa. Off the inside of the post! No respect for the equipment there. And could it go the other way? Kaido oh. can't sneak inside. As we're heading towards halftime now. I mean, that was a good shot by Kaido if the net was 10 feet wider. <laughs> you know what? This, this, this match has been very fun. <laughs> I think it's been particularly one-sided. Sydney City have had it is it is one it is pretty one-sided, but Sydney has had their chances. They, they have, have had they, them. They've had a couple of good looks, clean looks at the net there too, and uh, just unable to make the most of it. On the other side, Tokyo have really kind of dominated the ball and not made the most of that. So no changes looking like they're coming from either team here, and back to the pitch we go. Now Sydney, keeper. Love to get the cross in. It's going the other way now. Kaido. Isagi is going to break through looking for somebody. Oh, I guess not. I think Isagi tried for the shot and that was not a good decision to make. We've seen Ashagi score a couple of free kick goals from range before this season. Oof! And there's another. Oh, oh! It said great play by Soderberg to get the the cross in, but that Asagi shot goes well over. I mean, the thing is, is that like there's a difference between range and angle. There's very few players that are going to score on that sort of angle, unless the goalkeeper is not good enough. A bad giveaway by Rupp. A very quick counterattack? It was going a bit slow for a quick counterattack, but Hall's shot is saved by Berger. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of noticing about the Sydney offense. Is they love to transition uh, from defense to attack, but they do so, 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 so slowly. <laughs> you know, that, that that's, that's the biggest issue there. That y you want to... Wait, oh, here's Visser. Shot save. Uh, you want to try to... Th the whole point of a counterattack is you're trying to catch the defense off guard. They're not a, they're, they're not completely set yet. So that header does get saved by uh, McCarthy. I uh, can't tell who got the actual head on it, but there's a problem if you cannot you know, shift quickly, if you're not moving quickly, because you're, you've got them off guard. you got to get them. Kaido's shot goes just wide. Speaking of 
off guard. That was almost an uh, indirect free kick turn direct. Nobody really covering for the man off the ball. Is Visser now? Saved by McCarthy. McCarty. McCarty out to challenge. Visser made a bit of a mess of that. And, you know, you, you said earlier that, uh, you know, you like a good goal fest. And, you know, sometimes that, that scoreless draw is somehow more interesting than a goal fest. Agreed. When both keepers are playing as well as the keepers have today, it is entertaining uh, television regardless. Rube sends it forward. It stopped. It's not even the about the goalkeepers playing well. It's defense is really getting in between of those passes. Rise now. And that's it. They've broken the stalemate now here in the 69th minute. Nice. And that's Rise. Getting that outside corner. Sky Rise doesn't do this very, very often. It's more often that he scores with the big old noggin, but he decides to put it away with his feet today. Puts that pass. Uh, Bacardi and into the corner of the net. Tokyo lead. He's been working on his feet. I've been told he's been working on his feet. He's been working on his feet. And that's a goal for Sydney. How did that get through? Obviously uh, onside because there are two men guarding those posts there. A chaotic corner here. That's Claflin. Nathan that Claflin. Dropped to Claflin, yeah. Right place, right time. I think that took two or three. That's not even the right place, right? That, I, I wouldn't even call that right place, right time. That was. That was just good uh, body control to get that leg up in time to redirect that through. Also that, yep, a lot of uh, athleticism that went into that move there. And there's another goal real quick. <laughs> Rise getting it done with his head, as you mentioned. The man can do it all today. Dribble, shoot, and score with the big old noggin. Skyrise, the six foot eleven Canadian forward. I, I I shaped an inch off him last time. I'm sorry, Hamlet. Uh, there to put that home on the corner. Cardi just could not get up to that. And here's Hayden now. Gets it in. We're seeing a lot of goals now. <laughs> Floodgates have opened for Tokyo. I mean, for either side. How many goals has that been for this period of time? Uh, a well, four, good ball that that Scarpetta could Scarpetta could not really you know, register Hayden crossing behind him. Yeah, definitely. That's three goals in ten minutes. So the Scarpetta brothers are very good at what they do, but uh, every now and then we do see flashes of their inexperience. That one is a good example. Uh, not able to pick up the extra runner there. Not knowledgeable to call them out, and uh, Hayden gets past his man. Soderberg. That's pushed over the bar by McCarty. And Sydney still does, like, have a chance. Well, absolutely. The game's not over yet. Ten minutes left. Two goals. We've seen um, three in last time. So, let's see if we get another here. Soderberg. Oh. Taken down by Keeper. That's a free kick. That I just a little that, uh, specifically for you to notice. Uh, oh, Soderberg <laughs> gets the header. <laughs> That's a, it's a bit of a weird one, but hey, as I said earlier, it doesn't, you know, uh, they don't ask how, they ask how many. That's it. Little luck there. She put that uh, right above the fingertips of McCarty. McCarty kind of diving backwards, shot to get it, dodged a little too far back, and misses it. And that uh, is in the back corner of the net. Given a bit of a spin there. And, uh, yeah, what I was trying to say was, uh, oh, well, here's Hayden with another goal. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb Hayden scores yet another goal, a massive goal here for Tokyo and they are all engines firing right now I did say they needed the goal difference 
and uh, they, they certainly deliver. <laughs> They're doing it right now, and uh, I, the thing that I keep trying to say is, have you noticed the corner flags are, uh, th th as I said, this is for you, the corner flags are uh, LGBTQ uh, pride flags. Oh, are they? Yeah. Look. I did not notice that. That's nice. Maybe we That's can look wonderful. in the system of the game and try to make them trans flags for specifically when 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 you're in commentary booth. <laughs> oh no, that would be too much. I would definitely look at having that at Ginger London though. Well, here's Sydney talk. trying to get something back. We're in the we're in injury time now. Rube, that's saved away by Burger. I think it's just that corner too. <laughs> I wonder why and how <laughs> they're all supposed to be uniform unless it's something encoded into the game. I think it, it might, might be. be something in the game that like it's uh, when, when's Pride Month again? In the UK, it would be November. Um. Well, I mean, that specific flag is definitely a pride flag. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just on this subject now because... Tokyo is definitely in the lead here. They're they're running out the clock now. And that's going to be it. 5-1 win for Tokyo here against Sydney. And you wouldn't have expected it. <laughs> Look at that XG in the second half! It just... Ex that game just exploded. I told you it was going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I should have never doubted you. That was incredible. I wanted a goal fest, and boy, did they ever deliver and you know what? That first half, even when it wasn't a gold fe goal fest, was still fun. Even without them scoring, it was still a really interesting game. And you see that Tokyo just sort of... I mean, they just took off. They just yeah, took off nope. in the second half. They spent the first half poking and prodding at the Sydney City defense, seeing what would give, seeing where it would give. And then once the dam broke, the flood washed out the crowd. That was 27 total shots there for Tokyo. I wonder how many of them came in the second half. Well, you know, we don't get that chance to see those numbers. I'm sure someone will be more than kind to go back and pull the images from halftime. Well, eventually. Two, right? <laughs> Maybe I'll even do it myself post -key. I think that is it. Yeah, that's definitely the last game of today. I wonder if we'll get a end of match or day screenshot. We may. Uh, but with a win, with a massive win like that, Tokyo do find themselves in seventh place. They uh, Acker won as well. But uh, with that win, Tokyo have 13 points. They still have the goal differential lead. And in fact, they have reversed their negative four goal differential to, I think, positive zero? Or plus that's not a positive. That's just zero. <laughs> that is just zero. Oh, wow. I'm wrong. I'm very Sydney wrong. City has dropped into the relegation zone on that one. Yeah. So top side, Hollywood extend their lead uh they are now four points clear of the title Cairo city catalonia and uh, athena i make up that midfield where tokyo now sitting fifth on 13 points and their zero goal differential Accra now also sitting sixth how that negative seven goal differential will weigh on them just a little bit sydney city dropping into that danger relegation zone here now sitting on 11 points and seventh place uh sao paulo with 10 and uh it's getting to the uh what i call squeaky bum time excuse me i was gonna say that <laughs> But uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you look at uh, you know how far Sydney has fallen at this point. You know the the uh, the champions of last season, and you look at them today. It's just uh, it, it it's it's rough to see, and it, it goes to show about you know, I mean everything that happened. Like I'm not even sure what all happened with Sydney. 
So uh, they often say in sports that every season is special because you never know when your season is your last. And for Sydney City, that title winning season with that roster for a lot of them was that last season with that team. And uh, some hit free agency, some hit the trade block. And uh, here we are in Sydney City with a brand new team, just not able to find the coherency is need that's needed to uh, really com- kind of compete in the top league. And uh, well, are struggling at uh, at the moment. We'll see where they are at the end of the year. And I know you said something about like, oh, you know, Hollywood's not running away with it. You look at that, uh, that it's a four point difference, which yeah, there's definitely plenty of season left, but uh, I mean, what, what does Hollywood's schedule look like? That's, that's the big question there. And, you know, we don't have the time to get into that, but you know, Hollywood is four points clear of their nearest uh, competitor. So it's definitely, more likely that we're going to be seeing a big close look at that bottom of the table, that relegation battle, which is usually the most interesting battle uh, wherever you look. And especially here where we're not exactly fighting for a champions league spot or anything. So yeah, absolutely. But what a great slate of matches today. And that's everything for us. And that, yes, that is going to be it. Uh, I'm Jiggly and I'm TVC. Thank you.